Kia ora e huma, ko Dai Landy aho. That's me saying hi, I'm Diane Landy, and hello and welcome my friends, welcome to Manawahini Kōrero. Haven't been on here for a while, so get a coffee and buckle up. No, Michelle, firstly I'd like to thank you for the two videos, your last two videos. The first one was in support of Karen Davies, you're kidding right? And the second one was tying in all this transhumanism, trans, down the black rabbit hole and all these robot wars and Tamir, Tamir, Tamir. So thank you very much. Good. Really understandable. You wouldn't think so how I've just said it, but it was. All right, so first, yeah, I want to update New Zealand where I believe we were out with our laws and this um, gender woo-woo rubbish. We've got the self-sex ID was passed unanimously. It's law in April. I do believe it to be a omnibus law, one that changes all the others as well automatically. So what that means is an adult can change their sex on the birth certificate every 12 months. It's going to be quite regular if you start doing this when you're 18 or what have you. Not only can you do that, but there's, they've removed the marker that says you've done this. And so it's very hard to find a record of this. It's like almost akin to the police vetting process. So it's not easy to find out if people have changed their sex. And as an adult, you can do it as many times as you like. Which is a glaring opposite to the conversion therapy practices bill and for children. The conversion therapy practices bill that's also passed, that wasn't unanimous, I don't actually know the stats for that, but it wouldn't matter anyway because the euthanasia one passed and 70% were against it. But anyways, the conversion therapy practices bill is passed where any family member or therapist, doctor, professional tries to talk the youth out of transitioning, they can go to jail. Kind of in line with the hate speech, proposed hate speech, that's for three years. So that's been okayed. I'm not sure when it comes in as law, but I mean, it's all tacitly here anyway. It's on the government forms. It's in, you know, all the departments. People are putting their pronouns in their email signatures and all this crap, so... I don't think it matters when it passes. They're already making it pass. Um, and now, and in the wings, we have the sur surrogacy and adoption bills where you'll be able to lie about that as well. From my understanding, surrogates and the people who have bought the baby can go on the birth certificate as the birth parents. And same as adoption. So bye-bye, fucker papa. <sighs> Hey, um, so that's a bit weird. And then we, we've got the hate speech in the wings. That's on a bit of a pause at the moment. But since the protest out Wellington against the jibby jab and mandates, um, the hate speech has had to be put on hold. And but the biggie really is the uh, um, Oranga Tamariki oversight bill, I believe it's called. Oranga Tamariki are the state carers in New Zealand. And what they're trying, to, what they're proposing is that they do away with the independent child monitor and the children's commissioner. These two independent bodies that speak on behalf of children. <sighs> and make it all in-house. Kind of like the IPCA, the Independent Police Conduct Authority, where the police investigate the police and in most cases it comes out with uh, mistakes were made, lessons were learned, we're sorry. But also, yeah, so it'll be something like that. I mean, there's already, they already tongue-tie you when you work for the state. You're not allowed to criticise. So it's more tongue-tying, in my opinion. Um, and then they, um, the state always thought it was suffice that 10% of people on the board that they're proposing to put in Aero the Education Review Office, a completely different department. Ignoring all these Royal Commission reports they've paid for, thousands of dollars worth, just ignoring them. And, oh gosh. Right, so 10% to have knowledge of te kanga Māori, so that means anyone who's done a te course can be on their board. 
No, 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 manawahine korero, kaore, kaore, kaore. You must have 50% whakapapa Māori and 50% whakapapa Māori to multi iwis. None of this hand-picking one or two iwi. It must be from all iwi. I'm not I don't know what money a put all um, te kanga and ka was like. I don't know. I can't tell them. I can't go to another iwi and go, oh, this is how you do it because my iwi do it this way. So they must have a broad knowledge base of different Māori iwi. And the reason Manawahine Kōrero state this is because 59% of children in state care are Māori, the tangata whenua. 59%. So, oh yes, all know in the education, speaking of the kids in care, that are in a captive audience for grooming, because the state now teaches social transitioning in early childhood education. And if the little other kids get it wrong... Those children who get the pronouns of the social transitioning we thing, they are then peeled out, ostracised and shamed and coached until they get the pronoun right. This is being taught in our schools as early as two years old. So yes, well, that's a wee little wee catch-up from me. So thanks for listening. Mā wa.